Run around, Mr. Mazur, for five minutes, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Commissioner, the government launched an $8 billion taxpayer fund program called the Net Zero Accelerator. The government claimed that they could reduce emissions by giving away $8 billion to mega corporations through this program. According to your report, the Net Zero Accelerator projects, and I quote, and I got to double check this because I can't believe what I'm actually going to say here. This, these funds can be fast-tracked with a letter to the Prime Minister down at the bottom of page 8 of your report. I, and like I say, I, I hesitated because I wanted to make sure I had that quote correct. I, I find this quite alarming, scandalous, to say the least. Um, does this not concern you when you, when you reported this and when you uh, saw this? Does it not concern you that the world's largest companies can get access to the prime to, can write a letter to the prime minister and say, "Here, we need some uh, funding to uh, reduce. We might reduce some emissions." So I'll start by saying that that exhibit four point two, if I recall correctly, yes, four point two, yeah. describes the process that is available. I do not believe that we found any in any of the seventeen files. A letter such as that. So this is describes the process that can be followed, but I don't recall there being any where there was a letter uh, to fast track. Um, so that's an option that's available, but you'd have to confirm for sure from the department whether they've actually used that. I don't recall having seen it use, being used. So why but, was it there? But pardon me. Why was it there then? If you don't recall, like I guess that's just the standards. Like this is just describing the approval process, and that is one of the steps that's available in the approval process. It doesn't mean that in each in each of the 17 they went through all of these steps. Have you ever seen anything like that? Well, the I mean, ultimately, it, it's ministerial accountability to the decisions being made under this. And so we can do an audit, but ultimately, you know, the accountability is with the minister in terms of uh, demonstrating the value to taxpayers of, of these funds. We do have concerns, um, not so much about that letter because we didn't see it being used, but we did, fi we did find examples, I think it was three of the 17, where they were fast-tracked without due diligence, and we do have a recommendation about that to ensure that I said reporting of greenhouse gas reduction commitments is accurate. The department should follow due diligence and complete the assessment for all projects before agreements are signed. So that, that would be our view in terms of putting into place a, a, a better due diligence process before these big ticket agreements are signed. Why, why the Prime Minister? What do you, like, why would you send a special letter to the Prime Minister versus someone else, like a department head, to, like regular process? Like this is, this is pretty extraordinary. $8 billion access fund, direct pipeline to the Prime Minister. Like why, why the Prime Minister? Was that ever explained to you in your audit or did you ever, anybody ever ask that question? Well, we're auditing their execution of the program, and we have concerns about that in terms of the value for money and the total amount of greenhouse gas emission reductions. It's up to government to decide the process, and they they approve that. So I think that question would be better addressed to the to the deputy minister at I said if he's to appear. Deputy minister of I said, so that that's who would issue this letter. Because the... this is an environment uh, program, so would it not be the Dep deputy minister of environment that would issue? Who would who would write that letter to the prime minister? Well, we haven't seen an example of such a letter, but my understanding is that uh, maybe I should explain this a little bit better. So the net zero accelerator fund is part of Environment and Climate Change Canada's emission reduction plan, but it's administered by ISAD. So it's an ISAD grant and contribution program. They can still access billions of dollars through, uh, through a letter to the prime minister, though, correct? These mega corporations. Well, that, that's what's set out in the process that they, they provided to us as to, uh, on, in Exhibit 4.2, but we didn't see any examples of that letter being sent. Well, um, I guess, um, so I guess you, you don't think it's really appropriate the mega corporations can get free taxpayers' money through the Net Zero Accelerator Fund, through the Prime Minister? Do you think there's a better process? Well, uh, our views on this are wrapped up in Recommendation 
4.63, that whatever process and approval agents they want to have in their flowchart, that due diligence should happen before the approval of these agreements. That's that's our view. It's up to government to decide who does what in terms of the approval chain, Thank but we would you. like to see due diligence. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I'm going to follow up on a line of questioning by my colleague, Mr. Mazur. I want to go back and ask who would have written the programming rules stating that one could fast track approvals to the prime minister? Who would be responsible for that rule? So uh, you're, you're looking at exhibit 4.2 again in terms of the process. Yes. So that process is managed by ICED, um, and the witnesses earlier today would have been involved in approving the creation of this fund uh, at Treasury Board. Who actually made the decision for that off-ramp where the things can be fast-tracked? Uh, I don't know, I guess, uh, Monsieur Blouet, if we were given that information as to who approved the process set out in Exhibit 4.2? We were not given that information. So I'm not looking for a name, perhaps even a position. Who would have the authority to write that sort of a rule in place in a process? So I would say that it would, the process generally was managed by ICED. It would have re required some level of Treasury Board approval um, at least the program itself would have required some level of Treasury Board approval. But I would suggest that you um, speak to the Deputy Minister at ICED to find out specifically what position was involved in approving that aspect of the flowchart. I, I do not have a certain answer for you, unfortunately. And I'm not sure if you answered this earlier. Is this a standard rule for departments to have in place when seeking approvals for certain grants and contributions? Uh, again, that's probably a question better directed to the deputy ministers and, the, and at a global level, the Comptroller General who was here earlier. Uh, I haven't seen that particular example of fast-tracking with a letter to the Prime Minister in other grants and contributions. Um, audits that we've done recently, but we've only looked at a few, and there are there are dozens and dozens of these programs. So it's better to ask someone who has more of a global view of of this process. And I would say that would be the Treasury Board. Okay, thank you. In many audits your office has completed over the last few years, one of the primary issues that has been highlighted in those reports has been the lack of documentation and perhaps even mismanagement. When you see continued mismanagement called out over several years with no improvements, would you agree that a full forensic audit would help to give a full picture of the mismanagement? Uh, one could scope an audit to look at, uh, look at it in a global sense, or one can look for the trends across our audits. I, I would say that uh, both... Uh, the audits I've spoken about earlier today, as well as some of other ones to come to mind, we have looked at the the issue of open and transparent open and transparent process and documentation, as you just talked about. We've had concerns about eligibility. We've had concerns about um, whether the expected outcomes are being achieved, for example, in the net zero accelerator, and we've had concerns about whether the whether grant and contribution programs are properly, properly being measured, monitored, and verified. Uh, I can speak to those as a, at a general level by connecting the dots amongst many reports. Whether yeah. we would need to do another report to do that, I'm not sure. But okay. it, those are themes that have come, up, come up, okay. up across several reports. So a fuller audit could be in order. Yes. Well, uh, an audit of that level would, would need to be approved by the Auditor General in right. terms of looking at such a large, uh, so it, it would be up to her to decide okay. looking at, at the other, the opportunity costs against other audits. But Thank I you. can tell you that these themes have already come up in several audits and we can connect the dots at least for those. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.